Hey guys, welcome to my first video for Broadville E overclocking. Here you can see a Core i7 6950X CPU. This is the new 10 core from Intel. It's an unlocked CPU so you can overclock it. It has a stock clock of 3 GHz. It has 25 megabyte cache and it costs only 1600 euro only. Well, some might say I will buy a whole computer for this price, which I agree on still. It has a hell lot of performance and we will take a look at um, the performance later in the benchmarks. So first of all, let's take a look on the, at the new Asus board. This is the Rampage 5 Edition 10. I first thought it would be called Rampage 5 Black Edition like uh, we saw it before with the Rampage 4, but apparently uh, it's 10 year anniversary. So Asus called it the Edition 10. It's still an X99 board, so it's kind of similar to the Rampage 5 Extreme. You can see the layout is very similar. You can see only a few design changes. You can see the whole thing is now black, which I really like. And you can also see there is some metal shielding around the PCI Express slot. And if you turn it on for the first time, you will also notice some nice RGB color stuff, which is integrated everywhere on the board. For example, underneath the PCI Express slots, um, you can see it here on the chipset cooler, and you can also see it underneath here. There is a back backplate underneath the board, and between the backplate and the PCB, there is an LED stripe, and it's also connected to the RGB LED, uh, LED control. One more thing I would like to point out is the I.O. shield. I really like this feature. Um, compared to boards you, you've been, um, you saw the last years, I'm sure if you, um, if you build a PC yourself, you always had to push in the I.O. shield into the case before you um, put in the mainboard. Now you can see the I.O. shield is already attached to the mainboard and gives it a really, really uh, luxury look. Yeah, everything else is kind of similar to the Rampage 5 Extreme, so there is nothing special I could mention here. One thing I would like to point out is the fact that the VRMs, for example, are identical to the Rampage 5 Extreme. And also the layout here looks very familiar. I'm not 100% sure, but I would say that um, all the previous cooling gear, like from EK Waterblock, uh, like the monoblock stuff, uh, should fit on here. I will try to confirm that later, but for now, um, I think that should be it. So now let's take a look at a small hardware porn and then we will take a look in the, at the BIOS and do some overclocking. Out paper chasing, paper chasing, now we're 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 out paper chasing. Okay, enough drooling over hardware, so we will do overclocking now. And I just entered the BIOS by pressing the delete key and of course I went to the advanced menu by pressing F7. So you should end up in the extreme tweaker, which you can see here. And uh, yeah, of course I'm using the 10 core CPU, the 6950X. And on the right side you can see some of the basic information. You can see the stock clock is 3 GHz of the CPU and the stock voltage is around 1 volt. And you can also see the memory is not running correctly. You can see it's only running stock at 2133 megahertz. You can also see I'm using 32 gigabyte of memory. In detail, uh, it's a G-Skill memory kit with uh, 3600 megahertz. So first of all, we configure the memory correctly by setting the AI overclock tuner to XMP. Now you can see my extreme memory profile of 3600 megahertz. This is kind of too much for Broadwell E though. So 
Uh, yeah, the IMC, the integrated memory controller, probably cannot handle uh, memory speed that high, so we have to lower it uh, to around 3000 or 3200, which we will do in a bit. So first of all, scroll down. Make sure CPU core ratio is set to sync all cores and adjust the one core ratio limit to 40. This will mean that the CPU will run at 4 GHz because it's a combination of the 40 multiplier and the 100 B clock. Uh, yeah, this tutorial should work for the 10 core, 8 core, 6 core CPU because it's pretty much uh, a basic setting. So now we, here we have a really interesting option. This should be new um, to everyone. So this was something which is invented uh, with Broadwell E. It's called AVX Instruction Core Ratio Negative Offset. This means that whenever you run an AVX application, the CPU will down, down clock by the offset we put in here. So I advise to put three. This means if we run, run an AVX uh, application like Prime95 with AVX, it will not clock to four gigahertz, but 3,700 megahertz. Now we have to adjust uh, the CPU cache ratio. The cache ratio is um, the cache clock of the CPU and it also connects uh, the CPU core with a, a memory controller, for example. So you can increase this to around 34, uh, which should give you a little bit of a performance boost. Um, you can also try higher values like 35 or 36 later here. Uh, of course, if your CPU is running stable. So here we have the DRAM frequency, which I said earlier, um, 3600 is a little bit too much for Broadwell E. So let's adjust this to 3200, which should be fine. Now let's go to external DG Plus power control and adjust the CPU load line calibration to level six. In fact, the CPU load line calibration on X99 is just for the input voltage, not for the core voltage. Uh, if you want to know exactly what the load line calibration is, you can uh, click on the video I linked in here. It's a separate video where I explained the load line calibration in detail. So let's go back and go to in, uh, internal CPU power management. Uh, you can leave uh, speed step and turbo enabled. Actually, you have to leave turbo enabled, otherwise you cannot overclock. But we have to set those two values to the maximum. It's um, like a power limit for the CPU in watt. So whenever you put it to the maximum, like 4095 watt, it just makes sure that your CPU is not limited at all by any kind of power limit. Okay, let's go back. And now we will adjust the CPU core voltage to 1.2 volt. I also have to say that Broadwell E is producing quite a lot of heat, so make sure you're using a decent cooler. And also adjust the CPU cache voltage to 1.15 which should be fine for the 34, which we set up there. So now you have the CPU system agent voltage. Uh, it's kind of important for uh, running high memory frequency, um, but I would always leave this one on auto. Uh, it usually works very well to leave it on auto. Input voltage is the voltage which, which is transformed, uh, transformed internally into CPU to the core voltage. And 1.8 is a pretty good value here. Um, also make sure that you're using the correct DRAM voltage. For my DRAM sticks, it's 1.35 volt. So I will enter this here. And that should be it. Uh, there's nothing else you have to set. So the last thing we can do is go to tool, ACES overclocking profile, and save this as four gigahertz. Save it to profile one. And now we go to Windows and do some testing. Okay, so we just entered Windows and for uh, the testing we need CPU-Z, Core Temp and also uh, two different versions of Prime95. I will explain in a bit why we need two versions. But first of all, we will take a look at the details, the system specs in uh, CPU-Z. You can see the, the uh, i7-6950X, uh, which is running at 1.2 volt, which we set in the BIOS. And you can also see 10 core, 20 threads running at 4 gigahertz. So everything is exactly how we set it in the BIOS. And if you go to memory, you can see uh, 32 gigabytes uh, of DDR4 running in quad channel at 1600 megahertz, which is uh, 3200 because of uh, double data rate. And also the cache speed of uh, 3.4 gigahertz so everything is exactly like we set it in the BIOS so that's nice so 
of course we need uh, core temp to keep track on the temperature and first of all we will use uh, Prime95 uh, version 26.6 because this is uh, the non-AVX version. It's qu actually quite old Prime95 but it works very well for stability testing. So use custom and enter uh, minimum and maximum FFT size of 1344. Also check run FFTs in place. And now you can uh, immediately see how the temperature increases. Um, I'm using the Noctua NHD15 CPU cooler, which is one of the strongest air coolers you can get. So even with that air cooler at only 4 GHz, 1.2 volt, you can already see this is kind of getting uh, quite warm with like 73 degrees. So you have to keep this test running for at least one hour and you have to make sure that the temperature stays below 95 degrees. Otherwise, uh, it's getting too warm and the CPU would throttle. So you can see um, the CPU, if you do right click here, you can see all the cores and you can see uh, they're all running at 4 GHz. So you can see here core, uh, core 2 type uh, 2 FFT, so this is the old Prime95. Uh, we will close the Prime95 now. And let's take a look at a uh, quite new version. This is 27.9, which is uh, AVX uh, Prime95. We will do the same again, custom. 1344 here, 1344 here. Also check uh, run FFTs in place. Now when, when I start this, um, keep track on the CPU core speed. Uh, you can see it clocked down by 300 megahertz. This is the negative AVX uh, offset which we set in the BIOS. Because if you don't use this negative AVX offset, it will increase, uh, produce an in enormous amount of heat and it will be quite difficult to get a CPU stable. Usually uh, you, you won't have any AVX uh, applications for normal gaming, so you should not worry about this, just do the exactly same settings. Yeah, that's actually about it for uh, stability testing. So after using the old Prime 26.6, um, run another hour with 27.9 uh, with AVX, and then you should be good. Now we will take a quick look at um, Cinebench. I did a run at stock first, so you can see uh, the, the stock score was, was around 1616 at uh, 3 GHz uh, core, 3 GHz cache, but I already adjusted the memory to uh, the XMP. So let's keep in mind the 1616 and run Cinebench again to see the actual benefit of the overclocking. You will also notice that it's actually quite fast on uh, 10 cores and 20 threads, so it's kind of amazing. And you can see, uh, yeah, this is an increase of 500 points, so this is really solid, uh, 2116 points. Uh, if you have any questions about the overclocking, um, about Broadwell E, just uh, drop a comment uh, down below. Uh, I will try my best to help you out. If you liked the video, thumbs up and maybe hit subscribe. If you have any feedback, let me know. And well, thanks, see you soon.